So this is the part of the show where we get serious about things you might take for granted, like space poo. Joining us to talk about this and a whole lot more is Carrie Davis from Engadgets, in case you missed it. How's it going, Carrie? I'm great. I'm practicing my serious space poo face. <laughs> That's it. Man, you nailed it. You have a lot of practice here. Uh, so set the, set the stage. Where do we stand currently when it comes to astronauts and the number two? All right. First, first, I feel like it's very important that we take a historical perspective. When Neil Armstrong was the first human to walk on the moon, and we were all very excited, he may as well may have well have said, you know, this this is a step, one small step for poo kind, because he was probably doing some business in his pants, which is fine. Did you know that all astronauts have to wear diapers? Currently, today, ever since then, back in the 1960s, they wear diapers because, yeah. you know, well, we've not advanced. Go? I mean, so that's where NASA needs you. Um, <laughs> NASA and Hero X are joining up to offer a, I think it's $30,000 prize um, for anyone who can help solve the giant space poo problem. It's called the Space Poop Challenge. I love how they just own the name. I, yeah, I would completely agree. Mm -hmm. You might as I well. Wouldn't, you may as well. The fact that they kept the font purple and not, you mm -hmm. know, brown or something. Anyways, anyways, we're mature adults. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so they, what they need is help building um, something that will that will help take away either urine, poop, or blood because women are astronauts too, mm -hmm. um, for up to six days because, as you'd imagine. Um, having to sit in your own business for up to six days is actually really bad for your health. So they need to, you know, let the astronauts be up there and be safe. And just in case something goes bad, um, something needs to be designed to take away the business for up to six days without using hands. So that's their request from the world. The Get on it. The business. I like that. Um, yeah, it sounds like a large part of this is that, you know, if we're ever going to go to Mars, we've got a long distance ahead of us. And that's, well, that's a lot of poop. That's more than six days. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, why why crowdsourcing on something like this? I have to imagine there's a lot of smart people who create, who have, you know, created, I mean, everything that you that we talk about when we're talking about space uh, travel, why is, does this particular thing need to be crowdsourced? Do you think, you know, I think they're stumped, but fun fact, which I really enjoyed while reading up on this story, because I genuinely can't get enough, um, is that because of NASA, that's, that's the reason we have the diaper technology we have now was when NASA was figuring out how to deal with this, you know, step one version um, that's why we have the high quality diapers we have. So who knew? Thanks, NASA. Um, so yeah, they need they need some help. It needs to be some sort of system that can deal with microgravity um, to to take it all away. So um, that's that's the challenge. We should mention that you better get on this if you're interested. Put away any of the holiday tasks you had because the deadline is December twentieth. Oh wow! Absolutely right. So. Yeah, nobody wants your holiday card anyways. Do something important with your time. Yeah. I mean, you could describe in your holiday letter what you've been working on, which would be amazing. But <laughs> if somebody writes that in their holiday card, please mail it to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to read. Absolutely. I think we all want to get that letter, too. Uh, yeah. We turn now to drones, which until until now, anyways, has been more or less a company designs the thing, you buy the thing. Uh, now MIT is democratizing drone customization for people. Carrie, what exactly is MIT offering here? Well, first of all, every time I see an MIT story, I'm like, well, of course they figured that out. MIT, man, they're so mm -hmm. smart. Yeah. So their computer science and artificial intelligence lab, um, which is often on the forefront of a lot of things. I subscribe to them on YouTube. I get their PR pitches and I'm always happy to put them in the show I host because they're always doing cool things. So they came up with this. It's almost a CAD like system to build a custom drone. So it's not, as you said, just sort of buying what's available. You can sort of put together all of these weird in this model, these weird shapes. They said when they were testing it, um, they put together something called a bunny copter. So, you know, arms at weird, weird angles and kind of rotors all over the place. And then coolest of all is that before it's actually physically printed within the system, because they're smart, you know, and physicists and stuff, um, you can actually see whether your design will fly, 
within the system. So if there are any sort of abnormalities with sort of where you've angled things, it'll show you before you even spend the money to build it. So they're smart. Who who exactly is this for? Is this for just uh, me? I'm a drone enthusiast and I've always wanted to make my own drone. Cool, I can now. Is that what this Wouldn't is Wouldn't that be great? I think so. <laughs> you know, it's it's early days yet and they have not said like, here, here's here's the system. You can do it now. They're right. actually presenting all of this research and this program they built. Um, I believe it's next week at a conference. So it's not quite out there yet, but when it is, absolutely, why not? There are drone enthusiasts who I'm sure would be thrilled to get to play with this thing. Yeah, look at that odd, odd purple shape. I think that's the bunny drone and that's me. (laughs) (laughs) Which we will forever call you the bunny drone from now on. (laughs) Um, It reminds me of Kerbal Space Program, which is a video game um, where it's approved by NASA and you put together rockets to see if they can fly. You don't actually get to make the rockets, but um, but, you know, it uses physics and engineering and, you know, you can decide and then you send these little kerbals, which are these little cartoon people up in space um, wearing their diapers or whatever. You have and, to assume anyway. Yeah, and yeah. send them up there. Uh, so it's really cool um, to, you know, to learn about physics and engineering. And so I, I hope that they do something uh, with this soon. Yeah, I sure hope they make it public. Wouldn't that be incredible? We, we, the three of us, should build an amazing drone with a pooping NASA astronaut on the top of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. But maybe. It's, it's a recurring theme in this show. Uh, <laughs> so it's right at home. Uh, finally, we actually did talk yesterday uh, about Amazon's kind of their futuristic vision for grocery stores. Not so futuristic anymore because Amazon Go uh, apparently is going to happen very soon. Uh, Carrie, you have thoughts on Amazon Go. Want to hear what you have to think about, what you think about this. That is kind of you. Um, I feel like you're distracting me from the NASA story, which is always in my heart. (laughs) Um, first of all, did you see that? I think it was Fortune dug up this Intel video from about 16 years ago that showed the very same thing. It was from a point of view of somebody shopping in a, in a grocery store and it looks like he's stealing because he just walks out and then Intel's like, oh, ho, ho. Not so, this is the future. Um, So definitely the idea, like before we give Amazon all the credit, which we should give them a lot of credit, the idea has been around. But to me, and I'm curious to hear what you all think, um, do you remember the movie Enemy of the State with Will Smith and Gene Hackman? I remember that there was a movie, that movie, but I don't remember anything specifically from it. Do you make? I feel like I reference, you know, that I feel like I reference that movie all the time in the work we do on In Case You Missed It because, you know, it, basically that movie, I feel like predicts a lot of the things. Of course, there are many, but it predicts a lot of the things we talk about every day. And in that movie, Will Smith walks into, I think he's like walking by a lingerie store or something. Then they recognize it, the the AI recognizes him and calls him over. And so... While I think this is cool, thank you, Amazon, for, you know, coming up with this idea. It's all it's all cute and harmless when it's when we're using it for our own good. Right. But how can technology like this be used in ways that are not so, you know, shopping friendly, that are more invasive and um, could could hurt people's sort of personal security and you know, right to not be known in a public space. And so when I see stuff like this, I know everyone's like, oh my God, that's so cool. And I I also think it's interesting and neat. And of course I'd use it, God, you know, nobody wants to stand in line and wait um, to get checked out or pay some money. But the thing I keep thinking about is how this could be used in the future. Freaks me out a little bit. I mean, that's a that seems to be a common theme around technology in general and kind of the current state of where technology has been over, let's say, the past 10 years. I mean, it, at least since the introduction of the smartphone, where all of us have this computer in our pocket and over the years it's grown to do more and more and more things. And it's that it's that delicate balance of, you know, convenience. These things are really convenient. It makes it improves my life in so many ways, coupled with the idea that with that convenience comes a lot of a, a lot of release around things that you might have held dear to your heart around things like privacy, mm-hmm. you know, where you mm-hmm. go, what you do, your your actions, your habits, all that kind of stuff. We trade that as currency for these things. But you're right. I mean, you never really know exactly where that leads uh, mm-hmm. at the end of the road. And it's also true that privacy is becoming really expensive. So, you know, it's uh, it's more you know, it's, it costs money to have certain things that uh, have, uh, you know, that 
are more private. So you can imagine like if, you know, it was cheaper to shop in this Amazon grocery store and well, if I want my privacy, I'll go shop at, you know, the more expensive store where they don't know me. Um, so again, once again, it's more and more things, um, you know, privacy is becoming a luxury uh, and, you know, that's not the kind of world I want to live in. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. It, it also re quickly reminds me of, I saw President Obama speak at South by Southwest this last year, which was incredible because it was a small amphitheater kind of seating arrangement. And you're like, he's right there. Oh my God. <laughs> and so his big call to arms for the tech community there was, you know, build things that matter. Um, and I'd never thought about it that way quite la that way before. And so I read some stat in relation to this Amazon Go thing about, you know, only it's something like a third of adults in America don't have a smartphone. Like our people, of course, like the the people we interact with, we're connected, we're tech folk. Um, it's crazy to imagine people who don't have smartphones, but apparently a third of Americans don't. And so they they wouldn't be able to shop at a store like this. And so it just makes you think about like what what we're creating and for what audience. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, wow, this segment got really deep, really uh, really fast there at the end. It started with space poo and ended with where are we headed? Uh, we maybe. can always go back to space poo. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to. Well, uh, I, I'm sure we'll, we will have many op more opportunities to bring you back and talk about space poo. Uh, Carrie Davis, uh, in <laughs> case you missed it, at Engadget, really appreciate you coming back and uh, hanging out with us for a little bit. Thanks, guys. Great talking to you. Yeah.